Japan has had a serious problem with loneliness, isolation of so-called hikikomori. Hundreds of thousands of people spend their entire lives in their bedrooms. For nearly three years, Yuto Onishi's world was his bedroom. 30,000 people die every year. What does it mean to be hikikomori? This unique condition that is used to refer to people who have retreated or hidden inside themselves. Remember how you feel on those days when you just want to be left alone and avoid any human contact? Well, the hikikomori feel like that all the time. They are people who prefer to be socially, spatially, and psychologically isolated from the larger community. In order to be truly hikikomori, you have to have this mindset and have felt like this for more than six months. Why do people choose to live this way? Well, I have found that although there are several factors that contribute to the isolation of this unique group of people, the most telling factor is usually Japanese culture. You know I'm a fan of all things Japanese, but even I have to admit that it is a culture that is highly concerned with perfection and this places a huge strain on youth who so desperately want to fit in, but sadly, cannot. This phenomenon is made even worse by society's perception of hikikomori, as they are typically laughed at as being lazy or work shy. Because of this, they aren't given the help they need to come out of their shell, and their sense of shame worsens, and they become even more socially withdrawn. This phenomenon is commonly seen in young adults who can't find fulfilling jobs, or who simply wish to pursue a lifestyle that differs from the highly competitive Japanese workforce. They withdraw into themselves and live off their parents while getting deeper into the non-judgmental world of video games. Nowadays, this hikikomori phenomenon is becoming to happen across all cultures and age groups. This is both fascinating and scary and leaves you to wonder when you will be affected by hikikomori phenomenon. Nobody knows. Are they, are they making fun of me for what I said? Now everyone's probably wondering what's wrong with me. They all know I'm a hikikomori. While hikikomori is mostly a Japanese phenomenon, cases have been found in the United States, United Kingdom, Oman, Spain, Italy, India, Sweden, South Korea, and France. It is important to understand that people who are affected by hikikomori are still human. We should understand them and their feelings. Once you experience the hikikomori lifestyle, you lose reality. I knew it was abnormal, but I didn't want to change. It felt safe here. A person who is considered to be hikikomori always seeks isolation and never leaves home. Such people want to experience the joy of the outdoors and socialization, but only from the noise of TVs and computers. Asking them to do otherwise won't make them happy, and silence reminds them that they're alone. Most often, they stay in a room and stare at the ceiling the whole day. I was so unhappy. I cried every day, blaming my parents. I felt completely lost. I felt angry at myself, angry at society, like there was nothing I could do. Remember when I said that the creation of hikikomori was helped along by several factors that were uniquely Japanese? Well, the rise of social media has made it possible for any culture, even African and American cultures, to develop a class of hikikomori. What makes it so bad in Japan, though, is the overwhelming peer pressure and the lack of confidence in Japanese teenagers and young adults. People who lack confidence and are prone to compare themselves to others will always follow the crowd. The lack of respect for individuals in Japan makes it such that people who don't follow the crowd are looked at as having no value to society. He should be ashamed of himself! People like him are disgusting! <laughs> He's such a loser! <laughs> the most surprising thing about hikikomori is that they're born as normal people, just like everyone else. But when these people experience traumatic events, they can become hikikomori. In one study, a 32-year-old hikikomori known as Yusuke confessed that he was harassed and bullied by his professor during his university days. It was this past trauma that turned him against people, and even though he is now 32 years old, he still won't leave his room and has hobbies more suited to a teenager. 
He also says that he's extremely afraid of the world, to the point that even a phone call or email is so annoying and stressful for him. You can think of hikikomori as a form of depression or social rebellion. Hikikomori is undeniably the result of sustained mental abuse by controlling factions, be they bullies at school or societal expectations and fear of punishment for not conforming with no means of escape. Most hikikomori will be dependent on parents to survive. Their moms prepare food for them. Although most moms to hikikomori work really hard to push them outside of their room, they are inevitably fighting a losing battle, even as they struggle to convince them to go to the park and watch birds and enjoy being outside. The origin of the hikikomori phenomenon can be traced back to the late 90s, during Japan's economic troubles that hit young people particularly hard. Nowadays, hikikomori do not come from a specific age group or background. Most of them are men, but there has been noted to be an increasing number of women. They desire to get everything online because this means they will never have to leave their home. Some hikikomori do not have working clocks in their homes. They feel like time no longer has any meaning and they typically do not feel the passage of time. It can be really hard to be in a room full of people. The people who help hikikomori with their jobs or routine duties are straight up angels. They're helping so many who just needed a little push in the right direction. Personally, I hope the best for every hikikomori. No one deserves to feel alone or unwanted. The explanation is simple. For hikikomori, there is no community. There is a serious lack of love in the world. These are soft-hearted people, and they feel the adverse effects of social disturbance and suffer for a long time. This is a precursor to many things to come, as I believe that more and more people will become hikikomori as time goes on. Many hikikomori who I've spoken to have said, the more I know people, the more I want to live as a hermit. The isolation becomes comfortable. Life becomes stable when nothing changes. A lot of these people are very intelligent and caring people. Their talents are generally unseen and wasted because society is moving too fast. I think we're all a little bit hikikomori inside. It's just that for some, it has completely taken over their lives, and these people definitely need help. It is logical that a society that values work and money above all else would alienate people. Not everyone's able to perform this socioeconomic charade. When it comes to food, hikikomori usually stick to frozen, packaged, or canned foods. The majority of them boil vegetables every day and have half at lunch and half with dinner. Some hikikomori couldn't even remember the last time when they had a shower. People who have become hikikomori admit that they don't know who they can trust. They feel like every person they have met in their lives has tried to take advantage of them and they can only rely on their parents. There is a man whom we will call Mr. Haruto. His son became withdrawn as a teenager and two decades later still barely leaves his room. He admits he's confused what to do. He feels like there are no options, as even after the boy's mother died, nothing changed. He's had to call the police because his son got violent. Once he smashed the window, and another time he punched his wife and broke her ribs. Domestic violence becomes an issue for around 10% of hikikomori cases. Some hikikomori have admitted to having dreams about hitting their parents. This might be because they feel that their lives have no meaning or value and they become extremely miserable. It's too painful for them to see their situation as being their own fault, so they begin to blame their parents for not raising them properly. Some hikikomori may need more than just emotional support. One such case was a young man who had to take bratizolam just to be able to sleep at night. He was also taking Ludeomil and other antidepressants as the cause of his sickness could be traced back to his childhood when his parents used to yell at him, beat him for no reason, choke him, throw him down the stairs, and on cold days, they would kick him out undressed. According to old data, it's estimated that over 1.15 million people in Japan isolate themselves. And experts on this matter are projecting that this number will approach 10 million in the near future, a whopping 10% of Japan's entire population. Surveys have shown that hikikomori themselves may not know they're different and they are not willing to seek help. 
Attempts to force hikikomori to come out of their rooms, as carried out by some Japanese companies, have usually ended badly. On one occasion, a hikikomori forced out of his room jumped off a moving truck on the highway and fell to his death.